everyone, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small, and today I'm going to be continuing my look at 3D printing. If you saw my first video, we talked a little bit about the, the concept of 3D printing. I also talked a little bit about a Kickstarter um, that I backed for 3D uh, models, World War II 3D models. So I thought today we'd talk about this uh, concept a little bit more and um, talk about the software we need to prepare our 3D models for 3D printing. Alright, so let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and pull up. This is the Kickstarter that I backed with folders with all of the models. This Kickstarter was called March to Hell, I believe, by 3D Breed Miniatures. Um, the Kickstarter is obviously over, but um, that's what I'm using for examples for this video. So um, let's go ahead and we're going to look at some Marines, some 15 millimeter Flames of War appropriate uh, scale type of marines. There's also 28 millimeters, so if you do like Warlord uh, bolt action, you know, it's got you covered as well. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, look at some riflemen. Let's open up a rifleman. So this is opening up a program called uh, Chitu Box. And no, I don't want to update it. So Chitu Box is a, a free program. It came with my printer. Um, I have an Elegoo Mars resin printer um, and it allows you to like I said prepare the file for 3d printing so this rectangle that you see here this is called the print bed um, this is a representation of an actual metal plate in my printer that uh, the miniatures are secured to as they're built now you probably are all familiar with the process of 3d printing but I'll go over it really quickly basically the model is built layer by layer um, and we can see here kind of layer by layer of liquid resin until you get a 3D model which is pretty cool so if you think about this plate um, for resin printing it's actually upside down these models are hanging down from the 3D plate or the, the 3D printer on this plate um, and then they're kind of dipped from the uh, the bottom side. So we still start at the bottom uh, and build our way up but just keep in mind that it's upside down when we're talking about resin printers. Now um, like filament printers and other kinds of, of 3D printers those guys print like in a normal orientation like you're seeing here but for that resin printer again it's upside down doesn't really matter for what we're doing here but I thought I would mention it so this model is what we call a supported model these supports were added by the manufacturer now these can be added or by the the person who builds the model or they can be added by us the end users when we get a model if we need to support it and there's lots of um, rules guidelines um, there, there's no one way to approach how to support a model and there are much much better 3d printing dedicated YouTube channels on how to go into that in more detail but that said I will spend a minute or two to just talk about the concept um, as the 3d model is getting built um, things that stick out like this rifle um, have a hard time potentially getting printed because there's nothing underneath it directly supporting it. So the supports do exactly that. It gives it a contact point. So as the model is building these supports are being built and when it's time to build the rifle there's a support there to hold it in place. This also catches any overhangs um, if there's part of the model that just wouldn't print because it um, you know there's nothing underneath it to connect it then you'd probably want to put a support there so like I said this is um, a supported version now let's say we wanted to do a whole uh, stand of Marines so I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a couple of other 3d models and it's kinda cool because I can um, just add these guys maybe I will and I think that's just my uh, screen capture is acting weird because of the um, this program so but normally you see so now I've got these different guys let me go ahead and grab an NCO 
Let's throw him in here too. Okay. So now I've got um, some guys, and you notice I can move them around and put them in uh, a different spot on the build plate. You know, maybe I want to put everything here. Now, the other thing I might want to do is um, show you how to support a model. It's a motorcycle. There we go. So, let's zoom in and get closer. So you'll notice this model is not supported. It doesn't have these little posts attached to it. Um, so if we're going to attempt to print this, we would need to add supports. Now one of the nice things is we can come over here and try to let this um, program do all of the supports for me. And if I click this button, boom, it does all the supports for me. Um, and sometimes it does a good job, sometimes it does a terrible job. But you'll notice it tried to put connection points on all these different areas along the bottom here. The red is an area that needs to be supported. So you'll notice it didn't put any supports here. So you can actually come here and say, well, let's go ahead and put some of our own supports in this model. And you can have different widths, you know, maybe there. So there's a lot of different strategies to that. Maybe we want to support this roll. We see how it turns red there, that, that area is red. That tells us that area is potentially in need of support to successfully print. Okay, so that is um, the basics of 3D printing, like setting up your program for 3D printing. Um, so what we're going to do is, you know, maybe I want a couple more guys on here. Maybe I like this one. So I can actually come in here and clone it. Which is kind of cool. So you can imagine, you can populate this whatever you want. I've done a couple of projects where I've had like a spaceship and a car and a baby Yoda for my daughter, all printing on the same build plate. So you can mix and match. It doesn't all have to come from the same source. Um, every you know figure on here is kind of its own thing I can work on and edit independently. All right, so um, there is a lot more to using this program, but we don't want to, this isn't an advanced to tutorial, and like I said, there's a lot uh, better YouTube channels if you want to get into it in any depth. But you can see how simple it is, like with a supported uh, program, like this Kickstarter I backed, um, these models are already done for me and prepped. So I really don't need to do much else here, which is kind of cool. Um, now this one isn't supported so I would have to do some work and I just slapped these on and went with the default um, you know the program doing its best guess um, and added a few I don't know if that's the best you could spend a lot of time in here doing the perfect support job um, but um, I, th I think it'll be fine for our purposes so normally then so you've got your um, file or you've got your models laid out on your build plate. So the next step is saving this file. We're going to create a file. I'm not going to save the project. What I'm actually going to do is called Slice. So Slice is actually going to build the file format that the 3D printer is going to read. So basically it's going to build just like that, which looks really cool. Um, so I click Slice and you know it's chugging away figuring all that out and it's going to give me some options. I'm probably going to mess with some of the options that it displays um, just because of the size that we're dealing with. So here um, we've got our 3D model still. We have some options here. I'm going to slow this down to about 60 millimeters a minute. I'm going to 
increase the bottom exposure time to 80, not 800. Uh, hopefully make the uh, the exposure is how long it's exposed to, uh, I forget if it's a UV light that cures the resin on that particular layer. So for the bottom layers, I want it to be um, strong as it possibly can be so that it can hold the rest of the model as it's being built. And then the retract speed, how fast it dunks itself in and out of the resin, um, I'm going to drop that down to 100. So I'm going to make it go slower. And that's another way to um, ensure that the uh, print is successful. So over here on the far right, it's got my machine, uh, the normal resin I'm using, and this tells us how much resin, 5.8 milliliters, and that includes, I believe, all of the supports, and how, uh, how much, I plugged in how much my bottle of resin in is so it knows how much. So I'm spending about 29 cents worth of resin and uh, it takes about, uh, well, it's going to take a little over two hours to actually build on the machine. So, um, and then this particular window shows, this is what's actually going to be sent to the 3D printer. This is what it exposes. That's the bottom. You can see it as it builds. That's pretty cool. Alright, so that looks good to me. Let's go ahead and save it. We're going to give it a name. Uh, we'll call it Pamgast Test 1. And it's going to write that file that we're going to be able to then place on our USB. Alright, so our next step is going to be um, taking the USB stick to the 3D printer, but also preparing our 3D print printer for printing. So, like I said, this one video is going to be pretty short, but um, our next video we're going to go ahead and do all that good stuff. So we're actually going to bust open the printer, get it ready for 3D printing, and then print out our models. And then I imagine the other uh, videos after that will be um, you know, after the print's done and cleaning and all that good stuff. Alright, so there you go guys. That is a look at preparing your 3D models for 3D printing. Again, me using the March to Hell uh, miniatures uh, Kickstarter, but you could use anything um, that you can find online or create yourself. Alright guys, there you go. Uh, thanks for watching and keep on wargaming.